name is Eric. This is actually uh, our design. We made a little known multi-frequency signal generator. Basically, cell phones use digital signals to communicate. Um, Landlines, they're actually analog. Um, for years, pretty much since um, phones as we know them were invented, you, in order to dial a number, you create um, a pattern of frequencies to send down the wire. The switchboard, the automatic switchboard, reads those frequencies, translates them to numbers, and connects you to your destination. Um, a standard touch tone um, pad is a grid of three by four buttons. Each column is associated with a specific frequency. Each row is associated with a specific frequency. Um, each number is identified by transposing the, its column and its row frequency and sending that down the wire. And our project creates that frequency based on the numbers we type. Um, what we did is we, of course, used the Texas 2 board. Uh, we had the LCD display to present the numbers, and most importantly, we had a keyboard to type in numbers and a small speaker to create the noise that is associated with that number. Um, so our hardware is pretty similar. We use the LCD, and then we use the SPI to interface with the DAC and the PMOD amplifier, which adds the two signals together to produce a multi dual tone sound, and then um, the local or the PL will be to read the input from the keyboard so you know what number has been indicated. Um, the software is pretty simple, it just checks the, for um, input from the keyboard and then produces both sine waves for um, the, the required frequencies for that number. Similar to um, Lab 4, we use both timers in the OPB though because of the both frequencies and use the UART light to interface with the keyboard. Um, and then the PMOD that we use adds the two signals together. And um, we sent the second signal to the DA or the digital analog converter by using an SPI add on module that talked about. I think that everyone in the room probably had, well, except them, had problems with uh, figuring out what the exact baud rate should be to interface with the keyboard correctly. That was our initial problem, but once you get it done, it wasn't too bad. For actually generating the sounds, we did run into um, what appeared to be a problem with the Nyquist rate. The higher frequency, um, sine waves, we're not sampling frequently enough to get the correct sounds. So when we tested it on the oscilloscope, we were getting um, the higher frequency kept going down by about 300 to 600 hertz. All so of the, the sounds common frequencies are, are over a thousand, or over one kilohertz. So the baud rate that we had used for the, the row ones, which were kind of between Four and 800 hertz um, didn't work, so we had to use a smaller sampling rate to get 